I just fired my PCP once and for all after I think about seven years, maybe six. I'm very satisfied with the decision. If anything is left wanting, it's that I should have done it a long time ago. I ended up with this guy because he was my girlfriend's family doctor. And they 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 liked him. And I didn't mind him at first. But he he's Asian, I think he's Korean. And he started espousing all these Asian, uh, you know, Eastern Juju. <laughs> the one most famous to me was the tapping method. I told him I experienced anxiety, and he just kind of rolled his eyes, and shrugged it off. He didn't really think anxiety existed, or he didn't think he didn't believe in Western pharmaceuticals. Although I ended up getting those out of him eventually. He always made me feel guilty about it, though. <clears throat> he went off one day on the tapping method. I told him I experienced anxiety and depression, and he says, well, just spend, you know, a, a half hour of your day tapping yourself on the head and shoulders and face and just wherever. Find your sweet spots. And he starts tapping himself like a bongo drummer, and he says, just do it like this. Like, depression hangs out here. Tap here for a little longer than anywhere else, and anxiety hangs out over here, so tap yourself on the shoulder for several minutes a day. And, you know, he's a nice guy. I'm not going to say anything because he's a nice guy and means well, but I'm just making quacking noises in my head as he's going through all this. <clears throat> so today, I went to a new PCP. Uh, I, I ended up, uh, another reason I ended up with that guy, besides him being a girlfriend's family doctor at the time, was I had to fire all my other doctors thanks to Obamacare. And I liked all my other doctors. I still, I, I still, I still resent that, having, you know, being made to move on from all those doctors that I liked. That was like one of the central promises that was not kept of that whole program, the ACA. But at any rate, <clears throat> I found this new guy who's basically right across the street from the old guy. And ironically enough, as I was making my way over to the new doctor today, the, the old PCP walked right in front of me. He crossed my path as he was heading over to his uh, his practice. I guess he it looked like he was coming out of a parking lot where he, I guess he parks his car. And he looked so different out of his element where he, he looked, I guess we all do, but when you're used to seeing somebody in one place, they can look very different. And he just looked like a toothpick out in the real world. When he's in his practice and he's in charge and he's in control, he actually has a, a pretty you know, commanding presence, but if you just see him as any other dude on the street, he looked, he looked like a little kid. So I just had this very exhaustive, unexpectedly so, conversation with a, a doctor who, he's more than happy to hand out benzos and anxiety pills, and he doesn't even care. Like, the the, the last guy made me feel guilty about it, made me feel like I was begging, and he it even sort of implied that I was becoming addicted when... There's ample evidence to the contrary. So he's been giving me like a half a milligram dose, 30 pills, half a milligram each of this one pill. And I told this doctor that it would make a lot more sense to just get a higher dosage and I could break the pills up into little pieces and quarter pieces and blah, blah, blah. Last a lot longer, right? And he's like, of course, of course. So he gives me like the two milligram dose that I've been practically begging the other guy for. And he does it without even flinching. But that's that's not even the highlight of the... This felt like a psychotherapy session. I mean, I've, I've tried and failed with regular therapy where all we do is talk and basically waste time. He was getting into, like, the real zeitgeist of things. He was just getting into, like, what my brain matter is made of. And he was puzzled by the fact that Zoloft didn't work for me or was Prozac. He mentioned that word, and I was like, I just was like, fuck no, no, fuck that. I tried that shit. It didn't... It, it, it felt like a bad joke. Those things, um, that that those li those lines of antidepressants. 
And then I also, but then I, you know what? I don't mind being a little depressed. It's like a constant hum. But I think it's all right because I think depressed people have a more realistic, accurate view of the world that we live in right now. And people who claim to be happy as hell and happy all the time, you know, they can go stick that on social media as far as they want, but they're lying to themselves. So at the end of all this, we concluded that my triggers, I mean, what happened on Saturday, I got out of trigger moment and I had to leave work early. That's kind of what prompted this whole thing because I had to get some paperwork signed by this doctor to prove that I'm authentically diagnosed with uh, anxiety and, and uh, panic attacks and that kind of thing. So he signed off on that. But it was such a, I came out of there feeling like I just like triple orgasmed because like my mind is just like turning cartwheels. It was really exciting, a really exciting feeling. This is a really good, good guy. And why didn't I do this sooner? And I, like I said, it's like if, I, if there's any downside to any of this, it's that I waited so long to get away from that that previous dude. You know, it's funny though. We talked for probably 45 minutes. And the only, I mean, we didn't talk about absolutely everything, but what didn't come up were two of the big issues in my life the last few years, two of the big uh, brain drains, the big mind sucks, which was drinking and women. We didn't even talk about that. I mean, I did make mention of this one time I was fucking a woman, but that was just sort of a passing thing to explain that um, he, he I, I talked about being on top of a woman in bed and he assumed that I was having sex with her but what I meant was that I'm a sleep thrasher and that I frequently will I'm not a nightmare to sleep with I really am <laughs> hey ladies I'm a dream date right but I can be a real pain in the ass to sleep with just because I'll, I'll you'll wake up and I'll be flat on your face or my whole body will be right on top of you like you're my pillow but um, when I told him this he he was talking about he starts so you were penetrating her right and I said no no I mean <laughs> I mean yeah yeah we did that but um I was just explaining my sleep, and he used some big word that I didn't recognize, because uh, one of these women that I slept with a bunch said that I scream in the middle of the night, like, a lot, like, many, many times, like, you know, I, like, bark, um, and sometimes I wake up from that, most times I don't. I didn't I didn't know that about myself until she told me. I mean, I, I've always known I'm a pain in the ass to sleep with, though, so it didn't surprise me. But wow, I feel good. I feel good about this. I was nervous, and I, I, in, in a lot of ways, I think I lied my way through this. I didn't talk about the drinking. I didn't talk about, um, I, you know, I took a blood pressure pill before going in, so that artificially lowered my BP, and it was still a little high. In that sense, I feel like, and, and in, and in other ways, I feel like I lied my way through this. But guess what? Everybody knows by now that lying works. Lying is how you get ahead in life. Lying is how you get through.
Ну, я не знаю, 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 я не знаю,